Hey, what's up guys? Brandon Gentili here. I wanted to give you a little backstory today and it's something that I like to call brand story. Um, Ty Lopez talks about that a lot and it's really important to know um, where people are coming from. And it's, it's important and it's the reason why we're doing some of the things we're doing with business owners and influencers in the area. Things that many of you probably haven't seen yet and that you will in the coming weeks, months, and years. And it's getting the story out from behind the logo, out from behind the brand, what's going on. I wanted to give you a short synopsis because I've had uh, the email that I sent out uh, earlier today and the, the video that we did uh, yesterday, I believe, or maybe two days ago, and it just has a lot of people just asking, you know, what it is I do, how I got into this, why I'm passionate about uh, real estate, monetary history, currency, money, you know, etc. And to me, money is a, is a very interesting thing. Uh, currency is super intriguing because, you know, I've had this debate with my wife many times, like, why do we need it? You know, like, why do we even have money? Why do we even have currency? Like, what's the point of it? Why do we need it? is stupid, right? Like why, why don't we just, why aren't we just all at home sitting around doing nothing? Like that's, that's the, in, in, like in the grand scheme of life, that's what matters, right? When you're on your deathbed, you're looking back and wish you had more time with family. You're not wishing like, oh my gosh, I wish I worked more. I wish I was, you know, doing this and, and, and had, you know, 10 more, you know, work experiences or I was like, you just don't think that way, right? So it's an interesting debate that that's had a lot. And there's a couple of really good books on the subject actually. And um, one of them is the only game in town, and I forget I forget the the fellow's name who write who wrote the book. Um, there's a couple of books. I'll try to find them and link in here. It's really interesting and fascinating. But Mike Maloney talks about this a lot. But you know, currency and money really is it's the, the and it's why things have exponentially grown. Obviously, the industrial revolution and things like that. Um, and why things have grown so fast for the last hundred years, and why they didn't, why they was so it was just a flat line for the, for thousands of years, and then all of a sudden, you know, it's the hockey stick curve and exponentially just growth every single year now over the last hundred years or so. And it's just interesting. And when people have time to do things, they have time in their hands to build and grow, and the free market, you know, can let them prosper, and then lets them be able to just uh, tinker with things, invent things, and then in turn, you trade currency or money. Uh, or something of value for that in, in turn for their specialized knowledge and things really continue to grow and, and really start taking off. And that's what we've seen over the last 100, 150 years. So it was something that, again, like I was like most people, I was like all of you growing up and I just, it wasn't something I didn't know, you know, 10 billionaires or millionaires, things like that. I, I just had a fascination with money and really I think it was more of a security thing and just really wanting to know and I got that from my my father was just very uh, research 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 you know find out what's going on and I got that from him so I always like researching things and finding out what what these things mean and what that means and it became um, an interest really in college was one of the the first times and not the first time I should say it was the biggest time it was the life-changing moment when I I just saw the stock market going down. You know, I'm, I'm a senior at Michigan State. I, the stock market just going through the floor, going from some 14,000 and change down to 6,000 and change, and and just collapsing and, and you know 50% just gone overnight. And that really just it irked me. It irked me. I didn't have any skin in the game, but it just irked me. I I was baffled, you know, how could that happen? And then I really started thinking, you know, my immediate thoughts were, boy, I wish I had a ton of money. To me, just inherently, I just, you know, I, I think everyone knows for the most part, buy low, sell high. I just thought about, wow, if I just had tons of money right now, I would just pour it all in the stock market, ride it up, and then get out when it's breaking records, things like that, which we happen to be in right now when we're breaking records. And it goes from 6,000 in 2008, 2009, to now we're at, what, 23,000 and change? So just smashing records. And at the time when the market crashed, 14,000 and change were records. Um, I, I'm almost positive, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm, no, I'm positive there was records then. So it was, it's just truly remarkable to see how fast that people forget, how fast people forget what happened. It doesn't mean don't go out and spend money, it doesn't mean don't go out and do this, don't go out, it, it just means being smart, being, um, it doesn't mean, and it doesn't mean being fiscally conservative, it just means understanding what currency is, how it operates, how debt works, you know, what, why, why we're driven by debt now. You know, after the gold standard, after we, Nixon took us off that 1971, 
we became a debt society. We have to, in order, in order to fuel society, we have to print money. We've got to create debt. And that's why debtors are winners. Savers are losers, as Robert Kiyosaki says. So if you're saving money, saving money, saving money, you're losing because you're, you're, you can't even keep up with inflation. And, and that's a whole different talk for a different day, getting into inflation, what real inflation actually is and what the government tells you it is. It's, it's, it's mind blowing when you start getting into the, the specifics of what's going on and, and when you're comparing stock market to things of value like gold and silver and, and oil and different things and the stock market's actually going down, you know, things like that. So I, I saw these things and I saw them happen just sitting in my, in my apartment in Michigan State wondering what is going on? How, how are so many people, they don't see what's going on and it's, you know, I think with the last eight years or so, it's just people choose not to see what's going on. They, they want to believe that everything's always going to be okay, which is human nature. But I don't know, I just, I have a propensity to just think that I need to try to be on top of things as much as I can. And so really what happened is, is that launched me, 2008, 2009, that launched me into just the exploration of currency, money, and I'm a history buff, I'm a huge history buff, military buff, etc. So I love that stuff anyway, so it really fascinated me, just digging into monetary policy, monetary history, financial history, and just seeing what was going on. You know, reading the creature from Jekyll Island, things like that, why was the Federal Reserve created? What is a Federal Reserve? Things like that, it just really blew me away starting to read those things and, and wondering and, and just, you know, honestly getting mad many times because it was just seeing the citizens being duped, you know, and, and not understanding fully what was going on. And not part of it was because they, it was meant to be very confusing, but also just choosing not to pay attention and just kind of bury their heads in the sand and be very apathetic about things and just think everything's going to be okay, which it's, you know, the, the way of government, the way of life is that. The governments want power, right? People want power, bad people want power, governments want power, and they want to take that from you. That's why the Constitution was put in place. That's why America was great, that's why it's exceptional, because it had powers that limited government. No other country in the world had that before in history. That's why America is America. So it's not, it's America's not America just because you were born here. You know, it, we, we, you have to uphold what makes America, America. So, you know, it, it's, it's super interesting. I got into this whole, you know, last eight years, this. The studying and studying and studying of what's going to happen, what's going to happen, what's going to happen, and unfortunately, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I just I wasn't in financial positions to do anything in 08, 09, 10. Um, still playing hockey, I played hockey my entire life, and you know playing minor league hockey and college minor league hockey doesn't leave you with you know piles and piles of cash. So I wasn't able to do what I wanted to do at the time. So I made many great connections, many great relationships over the last number of years, and. You know, when you when it comes down to it, all the things I see and all the I read and I I watch and the charts and the graphs and the people I follow, you know, I've been talking. Obviously, if you've been following me at all, I've been talking about there's something coming, and it's just it's just just like the sun rising in the east and setting in the west. Something's coming. I mean, crashes, corrections, market corrections come every seven to nine years. We're in year eight or nine, depending on who you talk to. So things are coming, it's just life, right? So you gotta be prepared for things like that. It's just using common sense to run your life. And, and in this case, it just happens to be the market or, or, or currency or money. So I got into you know the Robert Kiyosaki's of the world and that was a book that changed my life was Why We Want You To Be Rich by uh, Donald Trump actually, believe it or not, ironically, and Robert Kiyosaki. I knew who Donald Trump was, but I had no idea who Robert Kiyosaki was. And I, I picked that book up, I was in a grocery store of all things, but I loved to read and I loved real estate and I loved all these things and it was probably about 2010, 2011 and that book changed my life. It just, it put all the things into perspective that I had wondered about for years and never knew what they meant. You know, like putting your money to work for you, leveraging yourself, creating assets, your assets buy your liabilities, et cetera. And it's you know, very similar to Rich Dad Poor Dad obviously, which was uh, Robert Kiyosaki's big book. Uh, and what really launched him into, into his uh, startup, but uh, or at least publicly. Uh, but he was already very wealthy just because of the principles that he engaged in, the principles he followed and lived through, through what his rich dad taught him, which were things like your assets pay for your liabilities. And so those little things, it just, again, those are some of those times I got very mad reading these things because I would, would sit back and think, wow, why did we not learn that in school? Like, why? We're just told our entire lives to go to school, get a great job, and, and then go work for you know, some big corporation or whatever it is. It just blew me away that you were never told, you know, your assets buy your liabilities. Your house isn't an asset. 
Um, you know, it is an asset, but it's the bank's asset. It's not your asset, things like that. I mean, that stuff just, I can't even think anything different now because I've rewired my brain. I've listened to it. My wife wants to kill me because I've listened to it so many times. I've read the book so many times that I rewired, literally rewired my brain. I can't think any other way. So that's how that just years and years and years of that. And then getting into real estate, I, I love real estate investing. And that's why I eventually got into realty a handful of years, years ago, almost five years ago. And you know, eventually I have a team now and realized very early on that I wanted to have a team and that I needed to leverage myself out there because I can't do everything on my own. I'm not great at everything. So I need other people who are better at me in certain areas. So this whole thing, like I said, I, I don't want to go too long in this. I'm going to go, I'll go deeper into this as time goes on, but this, the whole backstory of why I got into this, what changed everything for me. And it, it really was the crash in 08, 09. And then it was, you know, picking up that book, Why We Want You to Be Rich by, by Robert Kiyosaki and Donald Trump. That just changed everything for me. It changed the way I looked at the world. It made sense why I didn't like school because it didn't, it just wasn't teaching me the things that I thought I needed to be taught. You know, I just, I wanted to go learn business things. I wanted to go learn how to build businesses. I wanted to go learn how to make money work for me and not me work for my money. I wanted to trade, you know, uh, I didn't want to trade time for money. So things like that, that's where I really started to, you know, everything started to come together for me. And so, like I said, over the last eight, nine years, it's just been a constant, you know, 10, 12, 14, 16 hours a day of if I'm not working or actively with a client or doing something, just reading, watching YouTube, uh, podcasts. And that's the one thing I have, the one skill I have is just that persistence and just you know, just stubbornness of like, I'm just gonna will myself or work my ass off more than anyone I know, and eventually I'll get there. And, you know, again, it, it helped my hockey career a lot. I didn't always probably work as smart as I could have, so that's something I'm trying to fix now, and make sure I'm working a little bit smarter than I was back in the, back in the day, where I, I really just worked my, my ass off, and I didn't work as smart as I could have. I didn't compound, I didn't work with other people, I didn't work out with other people, where I could have really leveraged that, so now I'm making sure that I don't do that in the business world. I'm making sure I collaborate with other people, people that are smarter than me, better than me, and that can really elevate my game. So that's my you know quick synopsis of why I'm at where I'm at and why I'm doing what I'm doing and why I talk about, about what I talk about. So um, I, I appreciate all the, the comments, all the, the text, the emails, the, and you name it. I really appreciate all of you reaching out and talking to me about these things. I love it. Um, and I wish, I hope there's more people that want to talk about these things because I find it very few and far between people that want to talk about stuff like this, which I find interesting just because money and currency, all these things, politics, it affects every single area of your life, literally every single area of your life. So it amazes me that uh, people don't want to talk about it more. But, uh, again, I just, I love it. And if you ever want to talk about it, um, Facebook Live and YouTube and things like that aren't necessarily the place to talk about it, but uh, I'm, I'm always around to, to talk about things like this because I just absolutely love it. And uh, it's, it's really probably one of the coolest things out there. And again, it, you might have to be a history buff to really appreciate a lot of it, but um, so be it. So anyway, I appreciate you guys listening in because I know out of everything, your time and energy is the most valuable thing that we have. And I appreciate you guys listening in and I will talk to you very, very, very soon.